He said, yeah, I believe in God. Well, it says in James, if we go over there in three, he said the devils believe and they tremble. The devils believe in God. They know he, they were with him when he was creating everything. But, they, but a disciple is one that hears the word and does it. That means they're being disciplined. They're a student of the word. Amen. We just want to pray. I don't know if you have something that you want to share. Just for them, okay. you know, you know, we just for them, right? <laughs> it's just Usually it's me speaking or her speaking. We were doing it together quite a bit, but now today we, we'll do it uh, yeah. together. Because normally, anyway, I know you don't see it much. Maybe in other churches they don't speak together, but mostly wherever we went, we always talk. We always minister together, sometimes together, sometimes just as yeah. him or just me. So today we're just going to share a little. Amen. Thank you, it's Lord. It's like Priscilla and Aquila. Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. <laughs> you read the story. Amen. They were always together. Praise Amen. God. Amen. But we'll pray and then we'll get in the word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father God, we just honor you and thank you this day. We thank you for your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We, your word declares, attend unto your word, declare our ears unto your sayings, let them not depart from our eyes, but Father God, keep them in the midst of our heart, for they are life unto them that find it in health and healing to all our flesh. And we thank you, Father God, because you said the wise will hear and also increase in learning, Father. And we thank you and glorify you for your word, Father God, whereby we can eat, where we can grow, where we can receive understanding and revelation of your word. And we give you the glory, honor, and praise, Father. As your Holy Spirit, we welcome this day, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. We ask you whatever gifts and manifestations of your Holy Spirit moves, we always give you the glory, the honor, and the praise for it. In the name of Jesus right now, Jesus. we thank you for it. Bless you. In Jesus' precious In name, name, hallelujah. Jesus. hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, I always, in my life, like just talking about my life period, I always want to encourage people to diligently seek God. You know, I all, my prayer is always that you have to diligently seek the Lord. You have to seek God no matter what in your life. Because in everything you do, you have to do it to please the Lord. Amen? So in, any, in everything that you do, you want, to, you want God to be involved in what you are doing. Amen? You want God to, you know, to bless you. You want God, you want to really stay focused on the Lord. That's the encouragement that I always want to bring. That you know what, with God we have nothing. Without, sorry, without God we have nothing. So we need God in everything we do. So today I just want to encourage you. Take time to seek the Lord. Amen. I want to encourage you that we have to diligently seek God no matter what. I've got my scripture that I always, I love that scripture and I want us to go there right now before I even uh, go to the other scripture that I want to give, you know, because it, it's very important that we seek the Lord. It's very important to stay in the word. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Does everyone have a Bible? Because we're, we're a Bible reading, Bible believing church. Amen. We're not one of those ones. Hey, you don't have to bring your Bible to church. Everyone can just hear us now. Because we, we may call you out and say, hey, you know what where this book is? <laughs> Give us this scripture. Amen. Amen. It's, it, it's important to, you know, to be able to seek the Lord like that. It's important to... Uh, to stay in the word, amen. So I want us to go to Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. The thought, uh, uh, sorry, it says, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. So he says, for I know the plans I have for you, the plans of good, not for evil, the plans to bring you hope, even in the latter days. 
Amen. This is what the word says. So this, it doesn't stop there. You see, I always say for God to fulfill which that he is, you know, the plans that he has in your, for your life, for God to fulfill them. You, you, you can't just sit there and say, okay, I know God has got good plans for my life. And then there is no relationship between you and God. Right? You just get born again. Okay, that's a cool thing. That's a good thing. But it, getting born again, it's a good thing that, yes, you got saved. But it doesn't stop there. Because you want to have intimacy with God. You want to be, look, just your life to be aligned with the Lord. Amen? Because God has a purpose and a plan for your life. So it means that you have to stay intimate with the Lord. You have to seek God diligently. Amen? Because if you don't seek the Lord, then how do you expect God to speak to you? Let's say you are in a relationship. You call, your, you call your, your, your boyfriend or your girlfriend, you know, all the time. You want to talk. You text, hey, how, how are you doing this morning? Are, are things going okay? How is our day? What, what's up with... You know, you talk, you text, you do something. That's why you keep that relationship going, isn't it? And you talk on the phone, you know, and you keep that relationship going. But how is that with God? You don't want to do that. You don't want to spend time with God. Yeah? So it, what does the word say? Okay, verse 11. I read verse 11 that, For I know the plans I have for you, the plans of good, not for evil, the plans to bring you hope even in the latter days. But it doesn't stop there because God is talking of intimacy. He says, Then, verse 12, Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. So that means... To me, what I'm, is showing me here, it's talking about intimacy with God. You know, knowing God that, you know what, he's got a purpose and a plan for my life, but I have to do something. It doesn't stop here because I'm telling you the devil is out to get you. The devil is after your life because he knows that God has a purpose and a plan for your life. So you are being hunted by the enemy. You are being hunted by the devil to make sure that you stop that, that you stay blinded. You know, when we talk about spiritual blindness, that you don't know what's going on, you are blinded because God is got a purpose and a plan for your life, but the enemy doesn't want you to, re you to really know what really God has in store for you. So what does he keep you? He wants to keep you blind, not knowing what's ahead of you, you know? Because God has a purpose and a plan for you. But for you to know the plans that God has for you, how does God unfold that to you? You know, when you're not like being intimate with him. Because it's only that time that God is able to, you know, to show you things and speak to you through dreams, through visions. You know, God speaks to you through his word. When you are intimate with God, then God will begin to reveal himself to you. Because God won't just reveal himself to you when you don't want to be in, in a relationship with him. God loves you. And he wants the best for you. He has a purpose and a plan for your life. And the devil wants to cut your life short. And the devil wants to make sure, he wants to make sure that you don't even get to where God wants you to be. You know, because there are many people today, if you're called to be an evangelist, if you're called to be a prophet, if you're called to be a teacher, if you're called even to be an apostle or a prophet, and it's like, you can't get there because something is blocking your way and you're being distracted. Why are you being distracted? You know, God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Don't take that for granted, for granted because the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And he wants to make sure that he suffocates you. He wants to make sure that he sabotages you. Your, you know, the purpose of God upon your life. He keeps you busy with other things. 
you know, so that you won't be aware of really what's going on around you. Because the things that you see, it's only the things that you see with your natural eyes. But God wants you to see beyond your natural eyes, the spiritual realm, that's where your life is. That's where things happen. You know, he says here, he says here, verse 13, and he shall seek me. And he shall seek me and find me. When he shall search for me with all your heart, he says that, then he shall seek me and you'll find me. That means he won't hide from you anymore. He's like, I'm available for you. Because when you seek God as a vital necessity, you have to seek God as, a, as your vital necessity. That without him I can't do anything. Without him I can't breathe. He's my life. You know, and it is, it's true. As a child of God, born again, Christian, without God, you have nothing. And those people that do not know God, believe me, they are like walking dead. They're walking dead people. Because when the Spirit of the Lord is not in you, yes, you are alive in the physical, but believe me, you become more alive in, the, in, in, in God. You know, when you, have, when you receive Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, you see things differently. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I, I want to say something because when, when she's talking about being diligent, I want you to kind of understand what it means. Being diligent is when someone's like consistent in doing something and it's also getting up like early doing it. You know, when it's on a consistent basis, that's what it is. You know, like going to work. If you late, you know, you, you ain't uh, on a consistent time there. They're going to be checking you. You understand? But if you're consistent and you're getting up early, what you do when you get up early, you prepare yourself. You don't just go up in uh, the job looking like John Wayne. Don't brush your teeth, comb your hair or nothing. Ain't no one want to be around you like that. <laughs> I'm just saying, you got to prepare yourself, right? <clears throat> and preparing is getting in the mirror or you're cleaning yourself and you're getting in the mirror grooming yourself and stuff well let's take that spiritually rather than physically physically you do that spiritually preparing yourself or preparing is getting yourself up early before the Lord making time whatever you value you make time for it if it isn't valuable to you then you don't, show, you don't make time for it. You don't make effort for it. What you show your value is what level you put your time to do it. That's how you see what's valuable to someone. If something ain't valuable to them, then they just don't make an effort for it. They're not trying about it. They're not doing anything to be consistent with it. So it doesn't mean that much to them, right? I mean, that just shows you. That's how you measure your own self with it, it could be in your heart or whatever, but what, what you really have value for, you make time and you do you you do what you can to do whatever it is to go ahead and get whatever it is or be there or whatever. That's where you consider your value. So the same way with the Lord, and I'm not saying everyone, it's not a thing of condemnation. I'm just saying sometimes we gotta get up early if we know we got to be somewhere before time, take time, make an appointment with the Lord. You know, like you make appointment with people, have your appointment, your time with the Lord. I'm not saying it has to be all night or something, but you take that time where you get up, you talk to him, and you prepare yourself. His word is like the mirror. That's what I'm saying. That spiritually, you get in the mirror, you look at where your flaws are, you decorate yourself, shave, I don't know, cut your hair, whatever it is, to make yourself look good when you leave, you know? But that's the same way with God's word. That's why he tells us here, look at this in James 1, I want you to see something. He says here in James 1, and, I, and I'm still talking about diligence, see, because that's, that's really getting up. It means to wake up early. 
you don't consistently like that. <clears throat> it says right here in verse uh, chapter one, verse twenty-two. It says, "But ye, but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves." And that goes with Matthew chapter seven. It talks about the wise man or the foolish man. They built their house on the rock. It's the wise one that heard the word and did it. The foolish one is the one that heard the word and they didn't apply it. Amen? And the storms came to both people or both parties of people and it just showed what foundation they were building their house on or their life. Amen? Because everyone's going to have storms. I don't care if you're a Christian or not a Christian. Everyone's we live in a world, and Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But in him, you will have peace. So no one's apt not to have any type of storm come in their life. You know, some may have it rough, more rougher than others. It depends on what, if they're looking for the storm. Some may not want to be in the eye of the storm. Some are just trying to get away from it. But some people just want to be. I used to be in the eye of the storm. It didn't bother me. I was like wanting to be around that. But no, sometimes you don't want that drama. So you got to know what it is. But it tells you where your foundation is laid. So he says right here, verse 23. He says, for if any man in James 1, 23, if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer. He is like a, a man beholding his natural face. <clears throat> in what? In a glass or a mirror. So what's your natural? That's like a natural-minded person. He said he hears the word, but he doesn't do it. That's natural. He didn't say a spiritual. A spiritual person is one that hears it and does it. But he says he looks in a mirror, and what ends up happening? For he beholdeth continually himself. He, he or her checks herself out in the mirror. They're looking. You know, you get, I don't know, they, you see more women because they always put down the head visors and they're flipping up the mirror, driving, putting on eyeliner, lip gear. I, I don't even think they need a phone. They just looking all that and driving. I'm like, man, how they doing that? They talking about what's it called? You know, a, a, a deterrent as far as uh, being distracted. My Lord, you got the mirror down and you're designing yourself as you're driving. <laughs> that, that might be a miracle right there, how you're doing that. <laughs> but it says here, he, he, he goeth his way. And what happens? Straight away or immediately, was what do they do? They forget it. What manner of person they are or man they are. So they look in the mirror and they forget even what they already look like and they just go their way, you know? Until someone tells them, listen, man, I think you left the house. You didn't even know what was going on today. <laughs> look like you in the twilight zone. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> no, I'll just, it's like the lights ain't even on up in there. <laughs> But I'm saying, no, nah, they're, they're saying they forgot what manner of man the person is. You know, they, they don't even, they even, they ran out and forgot to even, they took a glimpse, but forgot to do whatever they did to make it, make them look presentable. Well, that's even with God's word. Because they run out and they forgot even what the word said about that area in their life or what it was, you know, to help their life. Because God's words of Mary, it reflects us who we are, what we are, you know, what we're to do, you know, and it tells us, it encourages us as well. It'll cut us, but it'll heal us at the same time, amen? That, that's what the word of God, it's a two-edged sword. He's there to love on us and share on us, but it also helps us in what we're not to do. If you take a car manual, you don't, they're not just going to let you drive on the road so you can kill another person. You go get a license, right? But you got to take a test because they're entrusting you with what? Responsibility. Amen. To whom much is given, it says in the word, much is required. 
there's more responsibility. Everything you give him more, there's more responsibility for it. So if you get your license, what does it do? It tells you how you're supposed to drive to, for yourself or for another person. But that's the same way in the manual. God gives us this for our own lives but also to help others' lives, amen? So we just don't destroy our lives, but also destroy other people's lives with it. That's what it is, amen? And so he says right here, verse 25, so he talked about the natural person forgetteth what person he is. But it says in verse 25, but whoso looketh, and then whenever he says the ETH, that means you continually doing something. It's a consistency. It's a diligency. That's what it is. You're being diligent. Amen. It says the hand of the diligent in Proverbs will bear rule. And in other words, they'll be on top. But what? The slowful will be under tribute. They'll be owing. Someone will be over them. But the diligent, they'll be over something. Amen. So he says right here, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty. That's this word. You're looking into the perfect law, amen? amen? This is the mature law. It's a mirror of what? Liberty. It didn't say a bondage. Now, you may look at yourself in the mirror and you, it might be some bondage going on there. But if you look in this word, there's liberty because where the spirit of the Lord is, what? There's liberty in it, amen? amen. There's freedom. Because he shows you how to be free. Amen? Because it says in John 8, it says, look at it here. I want you to go here for a minute. I'm not going to take away from it. Got me teaching now. Hold on. I'm going to go here for a minute. I want you to see something. He says, <clears throat> I want you to see something. Look at this, John 8. It says, and you can hold your spot in James. But John 8 says this in verse 30. And he spoke these words, and many believed on him. Then said Jesus to the Jews which believed on him. So these were Jews, you know, Pharisees, Sadducees. And he said that believed on him, if. See, if's a condition, that's based on what you do. God did what he's going to do. He hung on the cross. He died. He rose again. He put his Holy Spirit here in the earth, uh, allowed him to be in our lives. So it's up to us to yield to him. Amen? Amen. So he puts an if on condition because he doesn't just say, well, I'm going to do everything. You don't do nothing. He did everything. But now we got this body he gives us the ability to be able to control what we do. Amen? We're not in bondage. We don't have to have the body to tell us what to do. We can tell the body what to do. Amen? When you're in the world and you don't know the Lord, then, yeah, this body can run your life and it can run it right down the drain. But when you, when you know the Lord, His Spirit can be able to run your life or as you yield to Him. Amen? And he'll get you out of the pit, out of the drain. Amen? So he said, if you continue, that's diligency again. If you continue in what? My word, then are you my disciples indeed. So he's saying that's what a disciple is, not a believer. A believer is one, he said, yeah, I believe in God. Well, it says in James, if we go over there in three, he said the devils believe and they tremble. The devils believe in God. They know he, they were with him when he was creating everything. But, they, but a disciple is one that hears the word and does it. That means they're being disciplined. They're a student of the word. Amen? And he said, then are you my disciples indeed? And what will happen? This is the cause. If the effect is this, the result of it. He says, and you shall know. You'll realize, you'll get revelation of what? The truth. And the truth shall make you free. A lot of people will say, you'll know the truth, the truth shall make you free. They forget the part about getting in the word and continuing in it. Amen? Because God, his word, you'll know the truth. And who the son shall make free, <coughs> excuse me, is free indeed. Because why? When you hear the truth, 
you believe it and you receive it, then you activate his word in your life. Amen? Did I even finish? Let me go back here for a minute. In James uh, 1, verse 25. <clears throat> But he says right here in verse 25, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, and be a not forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. Amen? There's a work of faith. That's what it's called. It's not work like a job. Amen? It's the work of faith. Believing consistently, diligently on him. What did he say in Hebrews eleven six? Faith in that works is dead. No, <laughs> no we walk no. not by, by sight, but we walk by faith. No. It oh. says this, Hebrews 11, 6. <laughs> <laughs> but without faith, she was on the right oh, thing. With, but without, without faith, faith, it's impossible to please God. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> It says, but without, see, I'm, I'm going to start testing you all. It says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. You know, I remember, I'm going to go with a little story. I remember this brother was telling me, I was saying, he would always say, amen, amen, the whole time in church. Amen, brother, amen, all the, loud, just all the time. Brother just stopped the whole service, said it. He said, what I just say, brother? The brother was just like, he didn't even know what he said because he's so busy hearing himself. He didn't even know what was saying amen the whole time through it. You know, they just want to be heard. So, <laughs> so it says here, it says, but without faith, without it, it's impossible to please God. It says, for those who come to God must believe he is. And what is he to you? Is he your savior? Is he your Lord? Is he your healer? Is he your provider? Is he your protector? Is he your father? Is he your brother? Because he's a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. Is he your, you know, a friend? I mean, is he your comforter? Is he there to uh, secure you, aid you, guide you, lead you, direct you? Well, what is he to you? Because it takes faith to believe that. Amen? And he said he's a rewarder of them that diligently consistently, you know, early, amen, seek him, amen, he's a rewarder of them, praise God. Hallelujah. You. Thank you. <laughs> Hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Hallelujah. As he was talking about it, because as he says that, you know, but without faith it's impossible to please, to please him, for he come, he he that cometh to God must be, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. It takes us back again, once again, to Jeremiah 29, 11. When I say that, you know what? When you diligently seek the Lord as a vital necessity, that means you're seeking God with everything you got, you know? You're seeking God with everything that you got. He is your vital necessity. You're seeking him diligently, you know. It's like when you go to, is it um, Matthew? Yeah, look at Matthew. Let's go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, you know, the, the word says that we worry about a lot of things that we shouldn't even worry about because the word is already here. The word is just here for us. Amen. So we worry about things that we shouldn't worry about. We care about things that we shouldn't care about. So look at Matthew 6, 33. It says, but seek ye, you know, it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the for the for the morrow. Like take no thought for what you know about tomorrow. And it says that for for tomorrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the is the evil thereof. Amen. So he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. 
That's what you, you're supposed to seek. When he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, he's saying, seek the Lord. This is, this is what I believe this scripture says. It says, seek the Lord. Be diligent in seeking God. It's, uh, it doesn't mean that you seek things or, I mean, the things of God. Meaning, seeking the things of God, you are seeking God. You are putting God first in your life than anything else. Than anybody else. But your intimacy with God is very vital. Your intimacy with God is very important. Because you see, when we stand before the Lord, it's one to one. Because my husband won't be there when I'm standing before God. Neither when he's standing before God, you know, that day, he, I won't be there. But it's a one, one, it's a one, one thing. It's a personal thing. A relationship with Jesus is personal. You know? It's a personal thing. You have to take time. I'm going to just grieve you with that. I'm going to I'm gonna be behind you with that. Amen. Because we want you to be diligent. You want to seek God like never before in your life. You want to, when you begin to seek God, then you begin to hear God. Amen. Because God is speaking to you, maybe you're not listening. Because you're not paying attention. Because you don't know how. Because you're not spending more time with Him. But God is speaking to you. So you have to be able to identify the voice of God. Because we're going to speak about that. You know, knowing the voice of God, being able to identify, is it me speaking, or is the devil speaking, or is the Lord speaking? So you have to identify who's speaking to you. Because if you don't have that intimacy with God, then you won't know God. And when he is speaking to you, that means you can't hear him, because you can't identify the voice of God. He says that my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. He says, my sheep know my voice, and the stranger they will not follow. That means you won't be tossed to and fro by any wind of any doctrine. You know, people come, I mean, I'm telling you, it's the end times. There's something going on out there, I'm telling you, it looks like it, it walks like it, but it quacks. It says it walks like a duck. It quacks like a duck, but is it a duck? No. I'm telling you, they're out there. They speak in tongues. They do miracles. They do all kinds of things. But you as a child of God, you have to identify, is this God? They prophesy. As a child of God, you have to be able to identify, is this the Lord? Because God, the Bible says, First John chapter, First John chapter, First uh, John chapter four, verse one. Let's just go there for a sec. Look at what the word says. First John chapter 4. He says, verse 1. He says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ cometh in the flesh. Is, is it cometh in the flesh is of God, and every spirit that cometh not the, yet yeah, that every every spirit that confesseth that that Jesus Christ cometh in the flesh, sorry, cometh not in the flesh. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus. Oh, hold on, sorry guys. Here it says here. Okay, let me start. Verse 2, hereby, we, here, hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Okay, and then verse 3 says, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh is not of God. 
So what, what am I saying here? I'm saying that when you stay in the word, when you stay with that intimate constantly, you know, you have one-to-one -one with the Lord all the time, that you'll be able to identify when something like that comes your way, you are able to identify even these people that are prophets, they're saying they're prophets, actually they're releasing curses to people and binding the people because you, you easily go astray. Am I making any sense? You know, because if someone is not of God, they are not coming to bless your life. They are actually coming to make sure that they are assassinating you. Your, you know, your destiny and everything, they, mean, they, they are assigned to do that. That means they are not coming in with good motives. They are coming with wickedness and trying to sabotage whatever God wants to do in your life. You know, so what am I saying here? Have that intimate relationship with God so that you may discern what spirit are operating in this world right now. Amen? There's something that is going on in this world right now and it's going viral. If you didn't know that, it's in this country too. It's all over Africa. It's all over Asia. It's come here too in America. You know? But you have to identify what's of God and what is not. And the only way you can do that is spending time with God and be intimate with God. When you sense something is wrong, when someone approaches you, you can sense it and say, that's not God. Because you can sense it in your spirit because the spirit of the Lord within you and that spirit that is in that person, it will be fighting. Amen? You have to identify the things of God. But the only way you can is spending more time with God and have discernment. Amen? I don't know if I'm making any sense. I want to read a scripture here out of Proverbs in uh, chapter 8. And this is just talking about, you know, it's talking about watching it's also talking about hearing, and it's also talking about waiting. Amen? Because sometimes you you watch, you listen, and you wait. Amen? That's what they tell you, what, before you cross a road, stop, look, and listen? Amen? I should put that on a board. Stop, look, and listen. That's a new message. Because that's what you need to do. Stop, and then you need to look to the Lord. Amen? And you need to listen. Amen? Because a lot of people aren't stopping. They're going and going and going. And they're not looking to him. It says a man's ways might seem right in his own eyes in Proverbs. There's two scriptures that say it. It says the end thereof is destruction. The other one says the end thereof is death. That if It's right in their own eyes. The only things they're doing. But here he says this. Look at this. In Proverbs 8, 32, it says, Now therefore listen unto me, O ye children, for blessed, that means prosperous, uh, that means to be favored, amen, one to be envied of. So it says, blessed are they that what? Keep my ways, guard them, amen. Keep means to guard, you protect them, amen. Just like you protect your money, or protect your family, or protect, you know, what you what you cherish, you protect his word, amen? amen? You can wear the world loosely, but you should wear the God tightly, amen? Amen? amen. amen. Put them on like those tight, slim shirts you'd be wearing and stuff, <laughs> amen? That's how you should put it on, praise <laughs> God. But no, that's how you should wear it so it's tight on you, amen? Praise God. And then you should wear the world loosely, praise God. I mean, wear it clothes loose, but I'm just saying how they be wearing that, like, tightly. So he says right here, he said, for blessed are they that keep or guard my ways, amen? amen. So you, you cherish it, you protect what God's ways are. As you walk with the Lord, you'll know his ways, Amen. I'm 
just telling you, you'll know his voice if you learn to get in his word and you learn to listen to him. Because he has a voice. My sheep know my voice. And a stranger they don't follow. You know why I know the difference between a stranger and his voice? God won't lead you astray. Your strangers will. Amen? They'll lead you to things you don't, wouldn't think of you'll be doing. And then you find out, man, how did I even get here? By listening to some fool? That's why. That's how you ended up being there. That's what ended up happening. I've listened to some before. I'm talking about the past life. <laughs> and they get you know then you end up worse or you listen to your own flesh and they don't take you farther than that old saying your flesh will take you farther than you want to go you know it'll take you deeper than where you want to know and it'll, you, you'll be so far in you won't even know how to get out of it until someone comes to pull you out of that but it says here in verse 33 it says here that means, listen, what? Instructions. Amen. That, that's not a complicated thing. That's information. You learn instructions. I'm at work. They give me instructions. It's up to me if I want to do them or not. But I'm saying anywhere. They give you instructions. Praise God. You can live at home. They're going to give you instructions. Clean the, your room. Take out the trash. Anywhere you go, there's rules. People think they can leave wherever they they can leave where they're at. They can go where they want and there won't be no rules. That's a lie. Go live in a house and think you can do what you want. Yeah, you will to a point. You start getting real crazy. Some neighbor will be calling the police on you. You live in an apartment complex. There's rules. They tell you right when you sign the contract. You get a bank account. There's rules. You get a job. There's rules. Whatever you go, there's rules. The only place there's no rules is when there's lawlessness. Amen. You go to prison, there's rules. They'll take away all your rights. They'll tell you when to eat, tell you when to sleep, tell you when, you know, to do whatever. Go to the bathroom, take a shower. They, they got rules there for you. Then you'll be like a little kid. You'll be told everything what to do. And then if you don't like that, they got another place to put you right in solitary confinement where you'll be looking at four walls till you finally realize, well, how did I even get here? I'm just saying, there, there, there's a bunch of rules. And so people think they're exempt from anything. God has rules, but God gives you peace with his, and he gives you love with it. Amen? You, but the devil, he'll be like, yeah, you can do whatever you want, because he knows you're going to get whacked over your head sometime. You know, and then you'll be running back, crawling back to the Lord again. But he says this right here. He said, blessed is the man that heareth me continually again. That's diligently watching daily at my gates. That's diligently. You're watching. You're expecting. Amen? At the gates. Praise God. So when you're watching something, you're expecting. Amen? What is saying Habakkuk? He said, I stand at my post. Habakkuk 3. He told him, and I watch daily. He's watching, waiting for what the Lord will say. And then the Lord reproved him. And then he said, write the vision. Make it plain. That he that readeth it may run with it. You know, as far as write it down. Amen. God may say something to you. Get a pen. Learn to write it down. I used to have, I say used to. I used to have journals. I wrote everything down all the time. God did something, man. I'll write that down. Put the date and everything. So it's a reminder. I go back in there. I got Bookloads of uh, notepads of what he may have spoke to me, gave me a dream, something that happened, a testimony. It encourages you, amen? So you don't forget what he's done for you, praise God. So he said, watching daily at my gates, waiting at the post of my doors. What did he say? He stands at the door and knocks, right? So there's posts at his doors. That's that place where... It could be your secret place, amen, where you're waiting because it says enter in his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise, amen. There, there, there's a secret place in the Lord. I mean, spiritually, this is how I explain to people. You may be, if you saved and know the Lord, you may be in this physical body, but spiritually, you're in the heavenly places in Christ, you in his body. You want to know where to compare it to? Take those DVRs these people making. They get the phone. You stick it on those goggles. 
and they make you crazy, but I'm saying after you get it off, you barely know it's messing up your equilibrium, you know, after you ride in the roller coasters or something. But when you put those things on, what happens? You're in a room or you can play games, right? I don't know. Any, I feel like I'm talking to the walls here. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? It's a DVR thing, right? That's what it's called. So physically, you're sitting where you are. But mentally, because I'm not talking about spiritually, it's mentally. That's where the devil could get in your head. Mentally, you're not there where you're sitting. Mentally, you're looking through the phone in a room or whatever you're doing there on, on a game, on a roller coaster. I was over the Zambezi River over there when I checked it out. And I was like, man, it feels like you're going to fall or whatever. But I'm saying it looks real. Because it's mental. But even though you're in a physical place, you're not mentally there. You're somewhere else where you're at. Well, spiritually, in Christ, you are physically here, but spiritually, you're with him. You're one. So we're not trying to be, that's why he said, I'm not afar off. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Just because you may not feel him, or you don't physically see him, doesn't mean he's not there because he lives in you. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's why he says we sit in the book of Ephesians. It says we sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. in him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Even though you may think, hey, I, I can do whatever I want. You're still, the Lord's right there. <laughs> it, it isn't like you, you, he's not there seeing everything going on. He, like he just took a nap and went somewhere, he physically lives within us, amen? So he's right there, but we got to get close to get our mental state into a spiritual state where we can hear his voice. We got to quiet ourselves, amen? Take a time out, take a break from the world and be still and know he is God. So you can hear him. He'll talk to you even wherever you're at. But sometimes you need that quiet time so you can hear what he's going to tell you. Amen. To get that inside information. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So he says what? He waiteth at, my, at the post of my doors. Watch this. Verse 35. For whoso findeth me, what do they find? Life. What Jesus say in John 10, 10. The thief cometh to steal, kill, and destroy, but I come to give life, and that much more abundantly. Whatever the Lord speaks to you, it's going to be life. It's going to be fulfillment. It's going to be abundantly. It's going to be satisfying, amen? Because when he speaks to you, his words are real. When he spoke to the sea and told it to be still, it, it went still. That shows you how powerful his words are. So if he speaks to your life quietly, he's going to fulfill something in your life, what he's telling you to do, or just encouraging you, or saying something to you. Amen? I don't need to go there, but in 1 Kings, if you read about Elijah, when they all saw he just called fire down, and he slew 450 prophets, I mean, this man was like on fire for God. He, he's up there doing big things. And, uh, you know, just killed, waked out the whole 450. And then all suddenly after he did that, he put the altar and then fire came down and everything. Then he gets a letter from Jezebel. And it was sent by a messenger. You know, a little letter. It's just words, right? So he heard the words and she said, this time tomorrow, you're going to die. I'm going to kill you. The same way you, you know, that's the enemy. I always want to talk big and put fear in a person and act like he's going to do something. So, you know, that's how he, it sounds like a whisper or whatever. But what it ended up doing, it says when Elijah saw that, he ran for his life. Now, he just saw a fight. Now, I don't, you could be Mr. Holy than now. But he was a man of God, like passions, like we, it says in James. But he just saw fire come from heaven and consume the whole thing and kill 450. And then one lady gives a letter to him, I'm going to kill you tomorrow. 
just as you did to them. And he ran for his life. So he ran all the way to Mount Sinai. He ran first to the Jupiter tree out in the wilderness. He was going backwards. Then he sat at the tree. An angel came because he was hungry, gave him a cruise of a piece of bread and a cruise of drink. And on that angel's food, he ran 40 days and 40 nights. That's, I think that's longer than a marathon. They only did 48 hours. That's the longest I heard them run. That one guy, 48 hours. This is 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't take a break and ran straight to the mount. And then when he got there, he, he, put a, he was waiting at the mount praying to God. He's just like, Lord, kill me. This is his thing. Now, he's like, he, he could have just got killed. Why are you asking the Lord to kill you? You should have just stayed back where you were and let Jezebel kill you. No, but now he's telling the Lord to kill him. And so then what ends up happening? The Lord comes and brings a mighty wind. He brought an earthquake. It said the Lord wasn't in that. He said the wind, the Lord wasn't in that. And then there was like a fire. He said the Lord wasn't in that. And then he put his head between his legs, you know, like praying and scared. And then the Lord, a small, still, small voice came to him. And the Lord spoke to him. Because he wasn't in his circumstances. He was in a still, small voice. Amen. He wasn't in all the crowd and the noise that's going on, you know, blasting the music in your car, you know, at home, blasting the music. I had some neighbors. I could hear the beat going through the wall. I was about to rebuke that, but it was <laughs> blasting through that. And what's it called? They, you know, blasting the music. They trying to get all the noise out of not really wanting to deal with themselves. So they play all that so they don't have to listen to what's going on in their own head because they can't deal with themselves. That's what usually what goes on because whenever someone's alone, they always have to be with someone, always around doing something because they don't know how to deal with their own life because they know their life is void and empty. Praise God. I know I'm talking to someone in that video here, but I'm just saying, what's it called? When the Lord spoke to him, he spoke with a still small voice and he said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, go back. And he goes, oh, I'm, how he's afraid of his life. He was like, kill him. He said, don't you know, I, I got 7,000 prophets that haven't bowed down to Baal that I've hidden. See, sometimes we think we might know everything. We don't know everything. We only know in part. But it took God to speak a still small voice. He told him to go back. He said, what are you doing, Elijah? He didn't condemn him or nothing. He said, what are you doing? And then he told him. He was, a, you know, oh, he, what's about to happen to him. But the Lord spoke to him in a still small voice. And sometimes the voice of the Lord may sound like your own voice, real small. And you know that ain't your thought. And I'm not talking about doing something crazy because that's probably the devil. You need to rebuke that. But if he's telling you or giving you a thought, just saying, encouraging you. Because when he speaks, it usually encourages you or it helps you. And then you have this like conviction, like, man, I shouldn't have did what I did. You know, because he does it in love. Amen. When, he, when Peter denounced him three times, the Lord didn't even say nothing to him. It said... He turned his head and looked at Peter when the crop, the, the, the rooster crowed the third time after he already told him. Peter was like, man, I'll be with you, Lord. I'll take all these people on. Well, well, they ain't touching you. I'll kill them. You know, that's how Peter was. And Jesus was like, listen, when a, the rooster crows the third time, you're going to deny me three times. That's what he told him. He was like, I'll never deny you, Lord. And what ended up happening, they were coming again. He didn't understand the situation was going to come. And they were like, yeah, this guy, after he sees Jesus being beaten and all that. And then they said, oh, the, he was with them. He goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Now he's bailing out. Then another co company comes and said, yeah, that's the guy. And then he's getting like, no, nah, I wasn't with him. What are you saying? The third time they came Peter, the bold one, started cussing and talking crazy. I don't even know who you're talking about. And then Jesus had said, while he was in the crowd and beaten and everything, he said he turned and looked at Peter. 
imagine that. He looked at him. And when Peter saw him look at him in his eyes, he knew what happened because the crow, the rooster crowed third time. He, re, he felt so sorry he walked away, you know? But then that, Jesus don't leave it there because then he asked him three times, if you love me, Peter, after he rose again, feed my lambs. Then he said, feed my sheep. Then he asked him a third time, do you love me, Peter? He goes, Lord, you know I love you. He was grievous then. And then he goes, feed my sheep. And then, see, he got him to change his confession from three times where he denied him to change it to say he loved him. Amen? Amen. But I'm just saying this. It's to hear diligently. Amen? And I, I'll, I'll leave it with another scripture. One more here. Look at this. Because I know it's seeking him, but it's also listening to him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Remember that. I know you heard that when you were kids. Stop, look, listen. Amen. We need to have that S-T-L. Amen. Stop. <laughs> I had to think about it. That's why I was looking. S-T-L. So it's stop, look, and listen. S-L-L. Right? <laughs> yeah. Praise God. But right here it says here in Exodus 15. <clears throat> and I'm not talking about SNL, Saturday Night Live. I'm talking about SLL. <laughs> right? Stop, look, and listen. Praise God. So he says here in Exodus 15, verse 26. And this is after Moses. He just did a miracle because. They went to drink of this water and it was bitter. And then Moses called the water Mara and they were murmuring and complaining. They're like, how can we drink? Now they just had all these miracles. They still complained. I mean, God just delivered them and everything. They still complained, man. That's the kind of folks you don't want to be around. They always complain. They, they have, everything's a complaint, you know? Uh, you go around them, they, they can't see nothing good. It's always complaining about everything. I'm like, my Lord, can we just be silent for a moment and hear, you know, what, what, what the Lord, I want to hear a testimony. I'm tired of hearing all the moanings all the time. I can, can I get a testimony, an amen or something? You know, but it's always complaining. And that's what was going on here with the children of Israel. So they cried. In verse 25, I'll read this. And he cried unto the Lord because these people kept complaining to him. And the Lord showed him a tree because he was listening, right? So he showed him a tree. And it said, which when he had cast the tree or the branch into the water, the waters were made sweet. They were no longer bitter. And it says, there he made them a statue and a ordinance, and there he proved them or tested them. And he said this, if you will diligently hearken or listen to the voice of the Lord your God, amen? Now we can call him Father, amen? Then he's saying your God because Moses was the one like Jesus interceding back and forth, but now we have a personal relationship with him, amen? And we'll do that which is right in his sight and we'll give ear. That means to listen, put your ear, be attentive, amen? Like a class, when you're in class, the teacher goes, hey, pay attention. I don't have to do that here, everyone's listening. But he says, pay attention, amen? And he, that means be attentive, praise God. And he said, unto what? To his commandments and keep all his statues. He said, I will put none of these diseases or I won't allow none of these diseases upon you, which I brought upon the Egyptian. For he said, I am the Lord that what? Healeth thee. Amen. Amen. Well, now in Jesus, we are the whole. We are healed. Amen. Amen. But praise God. Then he was telling them. But the key thing is, he said, if you will diligently hear the voice of the Lord. Amen. Amen. There's diligently seeking him, but there's also diligently hearing him. 
Amen? It's one thing seeking his face. Like a lot of people, they just want to seek his hand. They just want handouts all the time. But we want to seek his face. Amen? We don't just want to know what his hand does. Or give me, give me, give me. Like when a little baby comes, it's always mine, mine, mine. No, it, it's seeking his face where what? You know his ways. Amen? I'd rather know his ways than always have, want, always want, want, want. When you get to learn and have a relationship with someone like her. To know her ways is to know what she likes. Amen? That, that what, what she likes and then you give to her, it pleases her. That's why it says, when those who are married, amen, they care for the things of the world in 1 Corinthians 7, how they may please the spouse, one another, amen? amen. But those who ain't married, it says what? Are to know how to keep seek the Lord and how they to please him and keep him pure, Amen? That's what it says. And keeping themselves. That's what it is until they get married. But it tells you two things. How to please your spouse is how you take care of things of the world. Amen? Uh, you know, she, a man's a giver. Amen? A woman's a receiver. Praise God. So when I give her gifts, she's happy. Come home, you know, with something. It, it can be anybody. But when you give gifts, amen? It, it makes her happy and everything. I'm just saying. But it takes me to know her and diligently like pay attention. Clothes I don't really buy and stuff. But I know some other things. Some women it's easy. You know, but it, sometimes it can be complicated. <laughs> you know, trying to figure out the shoes, everything. So I get the things I know that make her happy. But that's pleasing her, right? And that's doing diligence, amen? I'm doing myself due diligence to be able to do that. But that goes with the Lord, amen? When you learn to walk with them, you know, you begin to know what pleases them, amen? Because he said, if you abide in him, in John 15, and he abides in you, you can ask what you will and be done for you because we are co-laborers. As he's working with us, we're working with him. This isn't... Uh, where they call a monologue, amen? It's a one-way conversation. That, that, isn't, that ain't even a conversation, amen? That's someone always telling you what to do. A dialogue is communication, amen? Where one's talking, another's communicating. You know, like at those meetings, I want some input. Amen. I'm not just giving input. I want input coming back. I want to know something else. And that's what God wants. He wants us to talk to us and he wants us to talk to him. You have problems, he said, cast all your cares on him. He cares for you. Why try to handle it yourself? Amen. He's that big. You think he, you're going you gonna to give him enough problems he can't handle? Believe me, he's, he, he's over the world. You know how many people he's listened to at one time who might be giving all their problems to him and your problem's going to be in the way or something or he ain't got time for it? No. I mean, we got people in China. We got people in the Middle East. We got people on the islands. We got people everywhere giving the Lord their problems. Amen? And he's answering them. Don't just make yourself where you, you God can't, God, he's too busy, he can't come and speak to you or talk to you, amen? Yeah. <clears throat> You're not watching someone on YouTube, amen? Mm -hmm. They might not have no time, they probably just got someone doing the videos for them and they'll answer some questions, they ain't doing it even themselves. But when the Lord speaks, he speaks to you personally, amen? He wants a personal relationship with you, praise God. Amen. I don't want to take up too much time, but praise God. Mm -hmm. no, I, I, just, I just wanted to say that, you know, even as we ending this, you know, uh, Psalms uh, 37, Psalms 37 and verse 3, and I'll just be, uh, just, i start from verse 3 just to close it. Right. <clears throat> and it, 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 it says, um, uh, it says, 
trust in the Lord and do good, so shalt thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Amen. And then it says, verse 4, it says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. And then verse 5 says, Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He says he shall bring it to pass. You know, we have to delight ourselves in the Lord. You know, we have to delight. I mean, just being diligent, just being intimate with God, it's very vital for our lives. Amen. So I encourage, we encourage you today, you know, just to seek the Lord, yet he could be found. Because it says, the word says, seek ye the Lord while he could be found. You know, because now it's the time that as you seek God, God is, is, is looking for, for the, the word says that God is looking for true worshipers, the ones that will worship in his children in truth. That means God is, is really looking for you. If you are not seeking God, you know, God is looking for true worshipers. So when you spend time with the Lord, people think that true worshipers are the one who's singing the song, singing the song of the Lord. No, it's, it's so big. True worshipers, it, it, worshiping God, it doesn't necessarily mean that people who sing in the worship team, if I should explain that. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean people who sing in the worship team or in the choir musicians. You know, it says true worshipers, it means those that are diligently seeking the Lord. Just one-to-one -one relationship with God. This is what the word's talking about. It's not necessarily saying, oh, because you lead worship or you are in the choir or you are a gospel singer or something, that means God, that's the one that God is looking for. No, it means all, every one of us who take time just to seek the Lord, you know, as a vital necessity. Personally, you know, spending time with the Lord, reading the Word of God. It, you know, just sometimes you see, you grow. You understand? Just take your time. Just today, maybe just reading three scriptures and before you go to bed and just coming before God. Next time you'll be reading the whole chapter. Sometimes even if you don't understand it, just read the Word. Even if it doesn't make sense right now, but it will make sense tomorrow. You know, because the Holy Spirit is the teacher and is the great teacher, you know, amen? So um, I encourage you to read, even if it doesn't make sense, read the word of God. Take the scripture and just begin just to read, amen? And, you know, and take time, even if praying for 10 minutes or 15 minutes before, when you wake up, before you go to work, because you want to bring your situation before God. Just spending time, say, Lord, I love you. You know, I'm going to work right now. I just pray that you lead me and guide me. Father, I pray that, you know, you help me to do my job the right way and talk to people and just be nice. Just pray to God, God help you in everything you do. You know, whether you're working, whether you're staying home, I pray to God just give my day. You know, as I talk to people all day on the phone and praying for people, people who come for ministry, you know, I just ask God to, to help me, you know, because you know what, we, we all of us have to seek the Lord. We have to diligently seek, seek God. God is a purpose and a plan for your life. This is serious. This is serious. God has a purpose and a plan for your life. Don't allow the enemy to suffocate your life. And then, you know what? He takes your life away from you because you don't want your life to be taken away from you. That you don't fulfill which that God has called you to do. Because there are people waiting for you to come and minister to them. You know, there are people that are waiting for you, just for you. To come and, because it's only you who can reach to them. Because all of us are different and God has called us differently. But all of us, we are responsible to go out there and reach out to people and tell them about how God loves them as much as the Lord has loved you. So you are, about, you are the one who is to share that love with them and tell them that, listen, I've been there, I've done that, but I'm telling you, there is nothing in this life that matters more than receiving Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Amen.
Amen. So God loves you. And my prayer today is that seek God and you'll find him because he's available. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray. We'll go ahead and close our eyes. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, if you are struggling with reading the word or it's difficult for you to be able to read the word, when time comes for you to read the word, you can watch television and sit and, you know, enjoy yourself. But when it comes to reading the word, you struggle, you know, because you feel as you, the moment you just hold the Bible, just like, man, I, I, I can't, I, I can ha hardly keep my eyes open because you feel this heaviness just comes over you because you can't read the word. You can't even focus and you end up going to sleep you know that's a problem that's something spiritual we need to pray for you amen because you need to spend time with God if you have that problem I want you to come here I want to pray for you because that we need to take authority over that in the name of Jesus hallelujah thank you Lord hallelujah bless you Lord hallelujah 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 yes sir Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Rosuka Taima Nusis Salama Hanamaskaba. Oh, precious Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we just want to thank you right now, Father. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I bind that foul and clean spirit, my God. I take authority over the spirit of heaviness, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And when she's trying to read the word, Lord, I rebuke that spirit of witchcraft, my God. That's trying, Father God, even, Father God, to keep her eyes, uh, to keep, to shut her eyes when she's trying to read. I take authority over that spirit of heaviness. I bind you strong man and I command you to loose and come out of there in Jesus mighty name Lord God I bind that mind binding spirit and I command you to loose and come out of her in Jesus mighty name I speak deliverance and healing right now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet spirit soul and body in Jesus mighty name I rebuke the spirit of destruction that wants to distract you from reading the word and focusing on God in Jesus mighty name devil you are a liar and the truth is not in you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I command you to lose a mind in the name of Jesus. Lose your eyes in Jesus' mighty name. I cancel the assignment right now, devil, in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I thank you for deliverance from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, spirit, soul, and body in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We bless you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Has anyone ever been Jesus. having pain in their knee? You just ask him. Amen. We can pray Thank you, for Jesus. Pray hallelujah. 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 No. Thank you, Jesus. I just sense a little bit of heaviness. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just want to bind the spirit of heaviness right now. I cancel the assignment of the devil. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, evil spirit. I command you to take your stinky hands of God's people right now in Jesus' mighty name. We drive you out of you. We cast you to the of hell in Jesus mighty name Lord God and we thank you Lord for peace that surpasses all understanding and joy unspeakable joy in Jesus mighty name hallelujah oh Father God I pray for diligence my God I pray for diligence and focus Father in the name of Jesus that you touch each one of us Father I pray for the hunger and thirsting for the things of God that people be diligent to read the word diligent to pray Father Father, in Jesus mighty name Lord I rebuke every hindering spirits every stumbling block every spirit of destruction my God in the name of Jesus I take authority over the spirit of confusion my God even one when they start reading the word they just start getting confused I take authority over that foul and clean spirit of witchcraft in the name of Jesus. Devil, I command you to take your stinky hands off them in Jesus' mighty name. Lord God, I thank you for peace.
peace right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you for the sound mind in Jesus' mighty name. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind in Jesus' name. Lord God, we thank you and we bless you. And we pray that you show yourself strong, Lord. We, pr we thank you for a, sh a shift and a turnaround. Father God, for the good in Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your faithfulness, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that we are blessed coming in and going out. We are blessed in the city, in the fields. We are, we are above and not beneath. We are the heads, not the tail. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. We thank you for the favor of God that goes before us. Your goodness and mercy, it follows us all the days of our lives. Father God, we thank you for your covering and your loving kindness even right now, Lord. We rebuke the spirit of retaliation in Jesus' mighty name. We apply the blood of Jesus upon everybody in this place, their families, their relatives. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for your covering and your loving kindness. We thank you for your angels that encamp around us with swords of fire in their hands. In Jesus' mighty name, we decree, we decree, we decree, we declare that it is so, and we expect a good report. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. And one last thing before Thank we let everyone go, with Hallelujah. your eyes closed still, we always Thank want you to give the opportunity. Hallelujah. No matter what, you know, Thank you never you. know Thank where you, someone Jesus. may be Hallelujah. at or where they are in the Lord. Thank but if you, you don't know the Lord, Hallelujah. Or you have known the Lord and you want to come back to the Lord, we always give an opportunity to give your life to the Lord or rededicate your life to the Lord. And if that's you and the words touch you tonight and you want to do that, raise your hand and we'll like to pray for you and with you. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank Great you, Jesus. I, I just sent someone with a problem with your stomach. You've been having trouble with your stomach. I just want to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Someone you've been having a hard time with your stomach in the name of Jesus. Is there someone with a problem with your stomach? I'm going to pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just want to bind that foul and clean spirit of infirmity, my God. I take authority over that pain in your stomach in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus I rebuke you. Devil, I command you to loose and come out of the stomach in Jesus' name. I speak healing and deliverance to your stomach in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. I cancel the assignment of the enemy in the name of Jesus.